in this video, I'm going to be going over how to calculate a priori sample size calculations for a, a linear multiple regression, as well as calculating post hoc power analysis on a multiple regression model that you've already calculated. Right. I've gone over the uses and practicalities of calculating power analysis and sample analysis in a previous video which I should link in the info or make a little pop-up button but I didn't go over how to calculate them for linear multiple regression which is one of the most used statistical analyses at the moment so I thought it would be quite a good idea to just uh, go over that briefly right so essentially when you the purpose of calculating power analyses and sample size analyses is so that you have a sufficient power in your model and power refers to the level at which you would commit a type 2 error which is failing to reject a null hypothesis when the alternate hypothesis is actually more true than the null hypothesis so essentially you've found a significant model but your sample size is insignificant for that model to show statistical significance. So that's why you want to make sure that you have a sufficient sample size for all of the calculations that you're going to be doing. So that if you find something significant it would display significance. Right, so let's start off with an a priori linear multiple regression. So <coughs> it will be using G power it would be in the F test family because we are have we're comparing the difference between multiple variables and not just two variables that would be in a T test family so an F test is an omnibus test which allows the comparison of multiple variables at once <coughs> right so we have to to get our required sample size, we need a couple pieces of information. And the input parameters, we need the effect size, which is F squared. We need the alpha level, so what are we testing at 0 0.05 or 0 0.1? Generally, you stick with 0 0.05, so I'm going to enter that, not 0 0.056. Power level, so generally, you want it above. 0.8 or so, but I've seen people use 0.7. I suppose it just depends on the practicalities of the the test that you're doing and the sample size that you can realistically get. But let's just go with the, the more conventional 0.8 power. So that would give us a type 2 error of about 0.2. So we have a 20% chance essentially of committing a type 2 error with the sample size size which has a power of 0.8 and we're going to be using three predictors so we're going to be using this hypothetical data set where our outcome variable is ninth grade math achievement and we have three predictors age previous year achievement in math and class attendance so those are all going to be f attempting to explain the variance of ma ninth grade math achievement Right, so the, I suppose the tricky part, or the more complicated part, would come from the effect size, which is, G power uses F squared. So then the, co the Cohen's conventions for the size of the effect in a, a multiple linear regression is 0 0.02 equals a small effect size, 0.15 is a medium effect size and 0.35 is a large effect size. So you should you can use these effect sizes effect size conventions but Cohen strongly recommended finding previous literature and then comparing your effect size to that previous literature as opposed to using um, conventions. If another researcher has done similar research comparing or investigating ninth grade math achievement, unlikely, especially using the predictors that I've uh, 
thumb sucked and you could t go to their paper see what effect size they put or retrieved and then use that as a comparison to determine what you're likely to find in your own model so there's two possibilities of calculating the effect size here as opposed to using the conventions if you do go to use the conventions I would recommend going with a medium convention or medium size effect size as opposed to a large unless you know it's quite a, a small effect size or quite a large effect size if, you, if you're not quite sure I would suggest just going with a, a medium of 0.15 right so if we wanted to calculate our effect size the F squared we would um, click on determine and this little box would pop up so the first is the squared multiple partial correlation which involves calculating the product of the partial correlations for each of the independent variables on the dependent variable get that from um, previous literature and the second option is to calculate the individual correlation or Pearson correlation coefficients between each of the predicted variables and the outcome variable so if someone didn't use your entire model you can find their Pearson correlations for individual relationships between math performance and age attendance and so on so for instance if we go to specify matrices here and we argue that age is, has a correlation of 0.2 to um, math achievement in the ninth grade, previous year achievement has a correlation of 0.34 and class attendance has a correlation of 0.42. We can then enter these values in, so predictor, predictor 1, 2, 3 and 4 correlated with math achievement in the ninth grade and calculate the squared partial correlation coefficients and once we enter these values in we accept and then we can using these values calculate the f squared effect size so that will give us an effect size of 0.497 which is over the threshold of 0.35 for a large effect size and this, this would be a large effect size so the larger the effect size the, s the smaller the sample you'll need so we can calculate and then transfer the main win window So using this effect size, an alpha of 0 0.05, so 5% probability, a power of 0.8, giving us a, a type 2 error possibility of 0.2, and three predictors, we can calculate our overall sample size required. So using these input parameters, we would need a total sample size of 27, which is quite small mainly due to our large effect size to be able to run this um, analysis with a power of 0.8 so if we increase the power let's say we want a really strong test to 0.95 we will see that the total sample size required increases substantially so total sample size 3.9 so you would have a much lower chance of failing to reject incorrectly failing to reject the null hypothesis if you had a, a higher level of power and thus a higher, uh, larger sample size and additionally if our effect size was lower let's say we have a small effect size of 0 0.15 or 0.02 then our sample size would be very high 863 so again if we have a higher effect size a lower power and as well as the lower alpha level as in a, a lower threshold to meet our sample size requirement is going to increase substantially right so that's a priori so that is calculating the sample size required before you actually complete the test let's go on to um, a post hoc so after having calculated the test or the model what is the power that we have So we can see that the input parameters are slightly different here. So we have an effect size of 0 0.02, small effect size, error probability of 0 0.05, so alpha, 
and total sample size of 100. So let's assume that we have used this total sample size of 100. What would our power be, given that our effect size is quite low? I imagine based on our previous calculation of the low effect size, that our power would be pretty bad, around, um, I would say, 0.4 not even less, 0.185. So a total sample size of 100 doesn't have sufficient power when the effect size of the predictors is um, that low. So again, you can determine this. Effect size is calculated the same. Another way to calculate the um, F squared effect size, which is, I suppose, a bit more intuitive based on conventional outputs, is to get your R squared value. So whenever you calculate a, a multiple linear regression model, you get an R squared value, which is the, the product of all the correlations squared. Now if we wanted to, let's say we have an, uh, an R squared value of 0.25, right? We would take the formula for calculating F squared from R squared is R squared divided by 1 minus R squared pretty simple. So let's, if we had an R squared of 0.25, we would take 0.25 divided by 1 minus 0.25, which gives us a value of 0.333333, so essentially 0.33. So we have an effect size of 0.33 if we had an R squared value of 0.25. Let's just say we had an effect size of or an R squared of 0.25, so it explains 25% of the variance of ninth grade math achievement using these three predictors. Our effect size would be 0.33, which is just below a large effect size at 0.35. We're going to continue with our alpha level of 0.05%. We have slab three predictors, and our total sample size would be 100. So let's calculate that. And using this effect size and the sample size we, we had hypothetically used, we would have a very strong power level of 0.998. So we have 0.2% chance of failing to reject the alternative hypothesis incorrectly. So essentially how you calculate this required sample size a priori and the post hoc power of your model for linear multiple regression analyses. If this video was useful, please give it a like and if you want to be really helpful, subscribe to the channel.